the reports, special recognition, employee service pins, Mr. Smith? Yes, sir. We handle those. Finance office, um, certificate of achievement for excellence, mm -hmm. and, and the uh, emergency communication center. Yes. I'll take care of that. Nope. Are you, Mr. Smith, you want uh, Mr. I'll um, do the first two and <coughs> Mr. Acock. Mr. Acock, assist you on that? Yeah, because yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, we'll all be down here. So all right. Good. The appointment committee, Mr. Smith, mm -hmm. you have some appointments today? Yes, we do. Good. Board of Commissioners committee reports. Unfinished business, we have the VFIS presentation of the Fire Service Assessment in Wayne County. Um, we have um, that under work session. We're going to change work session and we're going to put it on unfinished business. We're going to bring unfinished business down to where it says on the agenda page. We're going to bring it down to where it says work session. And we're not going to have a work session on the uh, VFIS presentation. What we will do there is, as number one, we'll have the uh, presentation by OES and it will not be declared a work session, it will just be uh, a presentation and um, the, of course it's up to the commissioners how they want to handle it, but we're not going to define it as a work session. Um, we're just going to put it out in unfinished business. Number two, the emergency services cost recovery ordinance. Um, that also, number two, we'll leave that there and uh, we'll be discussing that. And on unfinished business, uh, we have uh, a report from Nunn and Bashir. We've engaged that company, of course, as you know, to do the um, payroll system report for 2012. Uh, they've indicated to me that they have that report and they would like to present that today. So we'll put that on unfinished business. Nunn and Bashir um, payroll system report for 2012. Any additions um, to the agenda or any questions on the agenda? You have in front of you have two budget amendments Ms. Holt brought over yesterday, I believe. Um, to Ms. Wilson, you see one <coughs> for um, <coughs> the 4-H <coughs> H um, grants. So these are our grant monies. So she would like to add those under her budget amendments under new business item number one. Pam will bring those to you. Okay. For those special guests for the presentation, uh, unfinished business, what we'll do is we will, we will um, try to, to get everything out at 10, get the public uh, time to come in and do public comments at 10 o'clock. So just as soon as that is over, uh, we'll get right into the county manager's report. He does have a report. Um, that he would like to share with us this morning, and then we'll get right into the presentation of fire services. <coughs> Any other closed session? We're going to, uh, is there any other discussions? Agenda? We have a motion, we go into closed session. So Motion's been made by Mr. Mayor to go into closed session. And it would be to consult with an attorney to uh, preserve the attorney client privilege. Any personnel? No, sir. Let's add personnel to that, please. Okay. And to <coughs> consider qualifications and performance of uh, employees. Any other discussion? All those in favor, going to closed session, raise your hand. All those opposed? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming this morning to our commissioner's meeting. This morning's invocation is Commissioner Daughtery and Pledge of Allegiance, Commissioner Mayo. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we meet today to perform the work of the people of Wayne County, please share both your love and wisdom with us. We know that your guidance on our path is part of your plan. While we may differ in opinion, remember us and help us remember that our common goal, with that being the welfare and the future of Wayne County. 
In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and place the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. State statutes mandates that the chairman inquire as to whether any member knows of any known conflict of interest or appearance of conflict with respect to the matters before the commission this morning. If any member knows of a conflict of interest, interest or appearance of a conflict, please state so at this time. Thank you. Approval of the minutes. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bell, thank you. Motion's on the floor by Mr. Bell, Commissioner Bell, sorry, to approve the minutes of the June 24th, June 25th, Board of Equalization Review on April 16th, May 21st, and June 18th. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, raise your hand. All those opposed? Thank you. Discussion and adjustment of agenda. Mr. Smith, do you have anything to add to the agenda? No, sir, other than the, um, so the, the two budget amendments, extra budget amendments that Ms. Holt will be bringing to you this morning. Those are the only changes that we have. And we did move our unfinished business down to the um, where it was work session, the VFIS presentation. Uh, we anticipate that right after the county manager's report, which follows the public comments at 10 o'clock. And then coming after that would be cost recovery ordinance. And then number three is we've engaged none in Brashear, as you've all know, is uh, do the payroll system report from 2012. And they will be reporting on that after uh, somewhere, hopefully around 1045 and to have that done. All right, uh, to begin with our reports and special recognition, Mr. Smith. Yes, sir. Uh, this morning we have um, first time this morning's employee service pins. So I ask the board to step down, please. Take time. I asked Miss Wilson if she would to uh, read off the names. This is for one year recognitions for employees, and uh, asked Miss Wilson if she read these names. I'm asked folks if they come over to uh, my left and stand, and then greet the board. Barbara Williams, Social Services. Pam Salls, County Department. Wayne Alley, Central Services. Lobiba Bridgen, Social Services. Nikita Newborn, Social Services, Albert Wood, Sheriff's Office, Beverly York, Board of Elections, Mary Toth, Social Services. We'll get started with some of you. <laughs> It's amazing how, with Miss York, a year, I can't believe it. It's like you just got here when you're having fun. See, there you go. I like a positive attitude. I love it. Thank you. I'm going to go see you more often. All right. We have five year, Miss Wilson. Amanda Plower, Social Services. Melody Smiling, Social Services. Stephen Cross, Information Technology. Tracy Body, Health Department. William Lane, Emergency Medical Services. Jeffrey Ralph, Facility Services. Kathy Tyner, Detention Center. Paige Hudson, Finance. Anita Du, Social Services. Uh -huh. Thank you. 
I got to say, there's one of those, shake her hand fast, please, because we're all on the fourth floor like nervous. When's she going to have the baby? It's been fun. All right, 10 years. Jacqueline Lamarette, social services. Marion Johnson, emergency medical services. Mary Walton, sheriff's office. Shannon Buchanan, social services. Just to let you know the others. A lot of our folks work shifts and that type of thing are able to hear, but we'll make sure that they uh, they get their pins. Fifteen years. Wanda Dean, social services. Teresa Blankenship, social services. It's purple day. Everyone's wearing purple day. <laughs> well, as we move along, the the envelopes get thinner, and the rows get shorter. So, uh, twenty years. That's right. <laughs> yeah. We all want 20 years just for that. At 25, it goes to flip flops or something, you know. <laughs> all right, 25 years. Judy Wooten, Detention Center. Kenneth Lupton, Sheriff's Office. Audrey Williams, Okay, we've got a couple more items, and I would ask Charlotte Jenkins if she'd come forward, please. <laughs> come on over here so yes, we can sir. see you on TV. Good. Can ah, we no, <laughs> you need to stand up here for this. This is pretty good. First, I want to thank Charlotte for what she does. Um, Charlotte is very passionate about her work, very passionate. And uh, she's been great to work with in my 12 years. But you've been here a little while. Did you start when you were five? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> Six, really. Six, okay. All right, let's be honest. This certificate of appreciation presented to Charlotte R. Jenkins in appreciation of 40 years dedicated service as a county employee signed by Chairman Steve King and tested by Marshall Wilson, clerk to the board. And on that, you deserve a hand and a hug. <laughs> I think you get your picture too, so. Thank you. Thank you. Now that's <laughs> Thank you. You gonna be here that long? Gentlemen, we got, we got, yeah, we got one more. God, this thing's heavy. 
How do you top 40 years? I don't know. That's, that's amazing. And still smiling. You know, that's great. Okay, ask uh, Pam Holt and she come up, please, in the finance office. And Paige, you can sit down if you want. It's up to you. Okay. They changed it. Good Lord, did I pull the wall out? So this would be how many years now? This would be 17 years. Okay. Come on up, Pam. Mr. Chairman and board members and to the public, I uh, want to first of all thank the finance office for what they do and their commitment on a daily, ba daily basis for professionalism and making sure uh, that uh, a good job is done, that the books are well kept, and that is recognized by the Government Finance Officers Association of the United States. This Certificate of Achievement for 2012 for Excellence in Financial Reporting presented to the County of Wayne of North Carolina and I would ask that the board present this to the finance office staff and to Ms. Holt for the job they do for 17 years of commitment and <coughs> continuous service. Not many in North Carolina can say consecutively to have received this award and it says a lot about Wayne County and its commitment to service. It is heavy. They changed from wood to marble. So they must up, <laughs> did they up your dues or something? Because they went to like Oh, so they're going to get cheap on us. Okay. All right. I think she's coming up for a... So you guys are going to have to come stand in front. Paige, this must be one of you. This may want to be one of Paige's last photos. Mr. Acock is going to present this. <laughs> yes, if you want to come up and do this here. I'll step right over here. I've got one that I would like to present to uh, OES office, uh, actually to the, uh, to the 911 center. Uh, I'm going to read this letter real quickly. In close, please find the cer certified partner of National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Certification recently received by the Wayne County Emergency Communications Center. In July 2011, the North Carolina 911 Board agreed to promote and encourage all primary 911 centers in North Carolina to become partners with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. In April uh, 2012, uh, Brian Taylor and Daniel Wiggins attended necessary training. Uh, for the training center uh, classes enabling them to deliver and complete the necessary training in February of 2013 to full-time and part-time uh, 911 telecommunicators. Uh, the new policies and procedures were implemented April 20th, I mean April of 2013 and required documentation was submitted to uh, National Center for Missing and Exploited Children for our partnership. In May of 2013, the Wayne County Emergency Communication Center was notified that we had met the uh, requirements for our partnership and the enclosed certificate was received. Also last month, while Daniel and Brian were at the National Emergency Number uh, Association Annual Conference, Wayne County Emergency Communication was recognized for their commitment to the safety of the children in our community. In addition, I am pleased to inform you that Wayne County is one of only eight communication centers in North Carolina that have become part with this National Center for Missing and Explored Children. Uh, and also I'd like to mention uh, Mr. Eflin Sager when he was uh, in Raleigh was very instrumental in helping get the 911 funds uh, where this could happen. And uh, I did mention Daniel's name a couple of times and I want to thank Daniel personally for his hard work in uh, making this happen. I know you're, you're the staff helped also, but I understand that you were very instrumental in, in doing this. And I'd like to, to uh, present this certificate to, uh, let's present it to Daniel. Thank you, sir.
we done? We have appointment committee chair by Commissioner Mayo. Commissioner Mayo, your report, your report, please. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. If uh, commissioners in your packet, we have one appointment this morning. Uh, it's pretty close to the front. Uh, the Wayne County Public Library uh, Board of Advisors. Uh, the appointment committee uh, recommends to uh, appoint. Uh, James W. Spicer uh, to the Wayne County Public Library Board of Advisors. Um, I make that in the form of a motion, Mr. Chairman. Motion's on the floor to have Will Spicer appointed to the library board. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? Thank you. That's all we have today, uh, Mr. Chairman. I would like to say uh, that um, as chairman of the appointment committee we've received a lot of applications since we've uh, been been uh, really asking people and we changed the website if you've seen on the application process it's made it much easier a lot of information is available so we still need people to keep sending those applications in we have we have like 35 or so uh, committees and boards that that we are responsible for volunteers, and it is very important that that we keep these boards active uh, and get people involved in Wayne County. So, thank you so much for and the public for filling these applications out, but continue to do so because <coughs> the next two or three months we're going to have quite a few appointments coming up. So, uh, keep sending those applications in. Thank you so much. Uh, that's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Mayor. Board of Commissioner Committee reports. Commissioner Camardi. Yes, I would like to report that since our last uh, commission meeting, I did have an opportunity to attend the uh, Wayne County Planning uh, meeting, of which I'm a member of that group. Um, uh, it it uh, it also it continues to uh, be a very interesting committee to serve on, and I just want to give a little prompts to the department. I think they do a good job and I'm real proud to serve with them. Uh, I also I'd just also like to say and thank Mr. Mayo and his comments for uh, in, in reference to the number of people that are uh, filling out information to serve on committees. I would just like to remind the public that the office here can help them but I can also tell you that uh, you can stop by any public school and normally the secretaries are accustomed to showing you how to go on the computers and do that paperwork right over the computer. I, I know that uh, I had someone that I wanted to get some assistance to do that and uh, one of the schools helped them to go on the site and to do it right there. So you're right in your community and so take advantage of the fact that the public school have uh, office personnel who can help you and remember that if you're serving on committees at the school level then that's sort of a good place to get started and then serve on the countywide uh, committees. I just want to say that so all the public might hear this can remember this is how you become involved uh, to serve on a, a wide variety of boards and I encourage all gender and ethnic groups to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner Clarty. Commissioner Pate. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A couple, couple of visits. Um, I attended East Carolina Workforce Board last um, Thursday evening, and I won't go into all the details because it could be pretty lengthy, and we got a tight schedule. But we uh, had a couple of presentations. One, we um, had Kathy Howard from um, the Eastern Region, and she made a presentation here before we were ready, and she made the same presentation to that board um, Thursday night. Wayne County, again, was highlighted because we were the first county to be named as a work-ready community. And people are still following us and still wanting to know how we did it. So that's, that's a really good thing. Secondly, um, we had a report from um, Danny Giddens, who was the Executive Director of Operations, North Carolina Division of Workforce Solutions, and that's a mouthful. What that is is the employment services um, merged with the Department of Commerce, and um, he was, was talking about how they were integrating their services and facing the fact that the employment service dollars are going to be cut by $30,000 <coughs> in the coming year, which means that you will see some local offices in the field close or become itinerant points and push more and more people to the internet for services, which was kind of disappointing, but it is what it is. Um, the other committee that I, that I attended was the Purple Heart Foundation, but um, we got them on the agenda a little bit later, and um, we'll talk about that at that time as a brief presentation and a proclamation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Pate. Commissioner Aycock? Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Not, not much today. Just want to make a, a <coughs> little update on uh, the com communication system. Uh, we are moving forward with the communication system. RCC is uh, in the county working. Uh, they've made some progress. Uh, hadn't seen a drastic change in the performance of the system yet, but in the in the next few weeks, uh, they're far enough along that I've been told that uh, we should start seeing some difference in, in the near future. Thank you, that's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner Acott. Commissioner Mayo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just have a couple. Um, we had a WCPA, uh, Wayne County Development Alliance, uh, Board of Directors uh, meeting this week, uh, trying to trying to establish and, and set a plan as for economic growth in Wayne County. As you know, our unemployment rate in Wayne County is still amongst the top five, uh, worst in North Carolina. We have to be, really be proactive and in, in, in trying to, to not only grow the existing businesses but new businesses we've we've had we've had an encouraging month with the announcement of georgia pacific on their expansion in dudley and uh so we're on top of it plus we're trying to find a fit uh, where the wayne county development alliance is going to fit in with the governor's new plan for uh economic development in, in eastern north carolina uh, so there's a lot going on there's a lot of changes and a lot of for the positive so we're just going to have to, to really push <coughs> hard to get jobs for people here in Wayne County uh, secondly uh, as as chairman as chairman of the facilities committee I know our county manager is going to have a report here shortly on the progress and updates of what's going on with the steel Memorial Library in Mount Olive uh, we have a detailed report today that our county manager will be given shortly. So uh, we're busy. There's a lot of things that have to be done, and we're making really good progress. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Mayor. Commissioner Dottery. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Over the last two weeks, I, of course, attended the uh, hospital board, and I think we all are beginning to see some of the uh, effects of the new health care law that's going into effect. Uh, our local hospital is going to be dramatically affected in regards to a reduction in the reimbursements. Uh, and they are, of course, trying to address that. Uh, I also attended the Board of Health meeting. Uh, there it was announced that uh, members of the school system has, uh, has uh, gone on a field trip and actually visited a similar dental lab to the dental lab, the mobile dental lab that we will be acquiring. Uh, they seem ex extremely excited about that. In fact, the entire board is excited about this new program, and we're hoping that that will be implemented and up and running soon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Daughtering. Commissioner Bell. 
Mr. Chairman, I have a couple places that I visit, a couple committees that I serve on. Uh, attending my last uh, East Point meeting, and they're still trying to uh, expand based on uh, the new criteria. They don't know what to do because they may be cut, but at the same time, they're trying to uh, uh, expand the number of counties that we have. We have 12 now, and they're trying to increase uh, looking at uh, Wilmington and a couple other counties. We don't know if it's going to happen or not. Uh, juvenile justice does a good job for the county as far as our youth was concerned, and uh, but they were expecting to get cut with some funding and we found out that they're not going to be cut they're going to stay the same uh, eastern region uh did not have a meeting uh this month they won't have another meeting until uh, august so uh, those are my reports thank you commissioner bell as you know we're all on the serve on the educational committee together and uh, as you also know that uh, a meeting has joint meeting of the Board of Education and the Board of Commissioners is scheduled uh, for July 30th, Tuesday at 8.30 and uh, we'll conclude at 12. That will be at Lane Tree and that um, is being arranged uh, through a, a joint effort. Uh, from a letter received, as you know, uh, from Steve Taylor, superintendent of schools, and uh, of um, a letter that was addressed to us uh, June the 4th, requesting funding for the Central Attendant Schools, Spring Creek Elementary, and Charles B. Acock expansions, and to find funding for the Grantham Middle School. And of course, we had our uh, presentation uh, by Jimmy Hyde. And with that, the other three, Mr. Height's been secured by the county to do the same conceptual plan, and that will be presented at this meeting for the other three projects that the Board of Education has asked us to fund, to partially fund uh, with, with them. And with that, we have arranged this meeting, a joint meeting that will take place July 30th. I've talked to Commissioner um, John Grantham and we will be getting together next week to uh, lay out uh, the agenda uh, to have it facilitated by the University of North Carolina School of Government representative and Mr. Height. That will be next week. That's my reports, or report. Next item on the agenda. If I can find it. Budget amendments. Budget amendments, thank you. Ms. Holt, uh, there she is. Ms. Holt. Uh, Ms. Holt, she come up and take the budget amendments, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Good morning. If you will take, and we're going to do this, um, I'll group them. We're going to do um, 4-H and property extension together. It'll be number two, number six, number three, and the two walk-ons that you were given this morning. Budget amendment number two is the prevention grant for East Point, um, uh, increasing um, the expenditures and anticipating the grant of $110,377. Number six is for $3,100. It's appropriating fund balance carrying forward a grant from last year. It is for um, Here We Grow. Number three, 4-H Robotics Program, increasing expenditure by um, $2,000, appropriating fund balance. This is where it was, um, the grant was received yet last year. It's moving into this year. One of the first walk-on is for $7,298.77. This is a North Carolina State University grant, Youth Family, Family Promises. That's anticipating the grant revenue. 4 -H, the next one is the 4-H military grant, anticipating the grant for $698.44 and increasing the expenditure for $698.44 all grant money. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner. I, I move to adopt. Daughtery. Commissioner Daughtery has made a motion that we 
adopt these budget amendments? Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? Thank you. Next budget amendment is budget amendment number four. It is for social services. It is anticipated as the crisis intervention program grant, increasing the revenue, grant revenue, $28,944, and increasing the expenditure by the same. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Pete. I move that we adopt the budget amendment as read. Motions on the floor that we adopt the budget amendment. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? Thank you. Next budget amendment in your package is number five. It is for the sheriff's office. It is increasing salary line items and decreasing um, extra help. And I have the sheriff here to talk about this. <coughs> no, you're on. Way up, Chair. We're up here. Taking the part-time money, and uh, that we were granted, and moving it over to a full-time position, be a lieutenant deputy sheriff. Uh, that's what we're asking on the budget amendment. Uh, decreasing the part-time money and also at the same time extra help uh, that money is also so we're looking at the savings but we'll be having an added position lieutenant deputy sheriff thank you sheriff Mr. any questions for the sheriff commissioner acock i'll make a motion we uh, accept this budget amendment motions on the floor by commissioner acock that we accept this amendment any discussion all those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? Thank you. The next budget amendment is budget amendment number eight. It is for the one North Carolina fund, Cooper Standard. Um, Wayne County has received the money, $39,350. We're increasing our revenue and increasing the expenditure for payment out to Cooper Standard for the same amount. $39,350, budget amendment number eight. Commissioner Mayor. I'm going to make a motion we accept this uh, um, budget amendment number eight. Motions on the floor that we accept number eight, budget amendment for the economic development from the North Carolina Fund for Cooper Standard. Any discussion? One question, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner uh, Pate. I think I saw Mike Haney come into the room here somewhere. Yes. Um, can you tell us where we are on the hiring part of that? Because obviously they're meeting their, their goals. morning commissioners Good morning. Good morning. Um, Cooper standard is at the 75% uh, rate of their one North Carolina fund uh, their uh, requirements were to be creation to be creating uh, 132 jobs and they're at a hundred and five at this point and uh, the uh, requirements are that we <coughs> check their NCUI 101 which shows the number of employees and that verified the count and as well as their fixed asset report showing that they had made the necessary investments and they have started up a new contract now and I would suspect sometime later this year or the first of 2014 uh, that they will be completing their uh, requirements uh, for uh, the full uh, one North Carolina fund, which again was, uh, I think it was 132 jobs. Any other questions? No, I just appreciate it. We need all the jobs that we can get. As Mr. Mayo said, the uh, unemployment yeah. rate's high, so <coughs> any investment that we can make to bring more jobs to Wayne County is what we need to do. Yeah, and these jobs also are, also are above the county average uh, in pay. Thanks, and they have good, uh, actually, they have great benefits out there. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Haney. Any other questions, comments? Motions on the floor? By Commissioner Payne. Did you make a motion? No, no, no. Commissioner Mayer. I'm sorry. <laughs> Commissioner Mayer. Yeah. Motion's on the floor that we accept this amendment. Any any more comments? Questions? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? 
Thank you. Budget num uh, amendment number nine will be discussed by the county manager in the county manager's comments. All right. That concludes them. Thank you, Ms. Holt. Moving on from budget amendments, applications for homestead exclusion. Yes, David Ward, come forward, please. Mr. Chairman, commissioners, we have uh, seven applications for homestead exclusion, five for elderly and two for disabled uh, veterans. These were filed late. Had they been filed, had they been filed timely, they would have qualified. Action by the board is necessary to approve these applications effective for 2013. Sure. Commissioner Mayor. Make a motion that we accept these uh, late applications. Motions on the floor that we accept the late applications. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? Thank you, Mr. Ward. Wayne County is a public health county pro proclamation. Wayne County is a public health. Purple, Purple Heart. Purple, Purple Heart. Heart. Purple, Purple Heart. I'm sorry. Oh, I said, well, I need some classes this morning. <laughs> Wayne County is a Purple Heart County proclamation. Mr. Smith, now we have some special guests. Um, I believe you do, but I was going to turn I was over going to, to uh, Mr. Yeah. Payton. I was going to ask take care uh, Bill Graham to step up and then, um, just for a moment. There's a banquet that's going to take place on August the 6th, and I was going to let him say a little bit about it, then I was going to read the proclamation. Okay. Good morning. Good, Good morning, Bill. Um, Goldsboro Wayne uh, Purple Heart Foundation is in planning stages now for the uh, second annual um, Purple Heart Banquet. It's going to be held 6th of August, 7 o'clock p.m., at the first Pentecostal Holiness Church. Uh, we have been very successful in contacting at this time 41 combat wounded veterans that we will be honoring, um, seven family representatives, re representatives of those that were killed in action, and uh, eight representatives of uh, naturally deceased veterans, combat wounded. Um, so we're looking for a, a great event. Uh, we are expecting a crowd of at least 400. Uh, we do have some tickets left. They are limited in number, but we do have some tickets left. Uh, but uh, we're just looking forward to this event to honor Wayne County's uh, combat wounded veterans. And uh, that's what our organization is about, um, to honor those that have borne the battle. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Graham. I will go ahead and read the proclamation. Whereas on August 7th, 1782, at his headquarters in Newburgh, New York, Commander in Chief George, General George Washington established the badge of military merit, the precursor to the modern day Purple Heart, the singer met met meritorious action, and is the oldest military decoration in use today. And whereas the Purple Heart is awarded to any member of the U.S. Uh, armed forces who were wounded or killed in combat with a declared enemy of the United States of America, and whereas the citizens of the County of Wayne have great admiration and the utmost gratitude for all the men and women who have selfishly <coughs> served their country and this community and the armed forces and whereas veterans have paid the high price of freedom by leaving their families and communities and placing themselves in harm's way for the good of all and whereas the contributions and sacrifices of men and women from Wayne County who served in the armed forces have been vital in maintaining their freedoms and way of life enjoyed by our citizens and whereas many men and women in uniform have given their lives while serving in the armed forces, and whereas many citizens of our community have earned the Purple Heart Medal as a result of being wounded or killed while engaged in combat with an enemy force, construed as a singularity merit meritorious act of essential service. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Wayne County Board of Commissioners proclaims the Wayne County as a Purple Heart County, honoring the service and sacrifice of our nation's men and women in uniform, wounded or killed by the enemy while serving to protect the freedoms enjoyed by all Americans. Adopt this day, 16th day of July, 2013, and I put that in a form of motion, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Pate. Motion's on the floor that we adopt this resolution. <coughs> Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Pate. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, Mr. Smith, I know in the past we have um, supported this group with a donation, and I think we have some money in, the, in our budget that we can do that again to match what we did for the um, the, the city of Goldsboro, I think, has already done the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I'll make a motion that we uh, donate $1,000 to the Purple Heart Foundation 
for these brave men and women who have served in our military and given it all. Yeah. Motions on four by Commissioner Pate that we give $1,000 to the Purple Heart Foundation. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, and that is unanimous. Appointment to Nahana Fire Protection District Commission. Mr. Smith. Yes. You've got a letter dated July 1st. And it's the Nahuna Volunteer Fire Department uh, recently lost one of its fire tax commissioners due to a death, Mr. R.A. Sasser, Jr. Mr. Sasser served diligently in his capacity for many years, and his service to the community was greatly appreciated. Uh, the Board of Directors recently met with uh, the remaining two commissioners, Mr. Darius Holland, Harold Crumpler, while preparing their annual budget. During the meeting, discussion was held regarding the vacant position. As a result, discussion was held Board of Directors of the Nahuna Volunteer Fire Department Respectful request that Mr. Roger Pittman be considered by the Wayne County Board of Commissioners to fill this vacant position. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner, Commissioner Mayo, uh, make a motion that we accept uh, Mr. Roger Pittman uh, to the Town of Volunteer Fire Department. Motion's on the floor to accept. Mr. Roger Pittman, a comment to serve on the board of directors of the Hunter Volunteer Fire Department. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Sir. A Commissioner Acock. Oh, uh, would like to also state that Mr. Pittman does live in the tax district. He is not a member of the fire department, but he's been him and his family have been very supportive overall uh, the fifty some year history of the Hunter Fire Department. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Acock. Any other discussion? <coughs> All those in favor of the motion, raise your hand. All those opposed, thank you. Unanimous. Lafayette Park, Section 3, Subdivision Plant. Mr. Smith. Yes, sir. That's Connie Price, Planning Director. Could come forward with that information, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. Price. You got before you Lafayette Park, uh, Section 3, Final. This is lots 11 through 14 and 25 through 33. The subdivision is located off of US 117 South in Brogdon Township. This is the continuation of a subdivision that started some years ago. The streets are in place, four lines in place. All of the lots meet the minimum lot size for the RA30 zone. It is in a high noise area and they do have a note on the plat stating that the construction of the homes in that area uh, would have to meet a higher standard that was reduced noise inside of the homes. Planning board recommends that it be approved as presented. Planning board has recommended that this plat that's presented before you be approved. What's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Camardi. I'd like to offer a motion that we approve this. Motions on the floor that we approve. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Daughtery. Uh, Mr. Price, uh, my question on that was you said it was in the high noise level? Y yes, sir. Is that within the, so is it within the ACUS? Yes, sir. Zone? That's correct. Uh, did we receive any comment from the base on this? They uh, said that residential development in this area was strongly discouraged. Strongly discouraged? Yes, sir. It does meet the requirements of our zone ordinance, sir. It does. Sir. Yes, sir. Is that pretty much a standard letter that you receive any any time there's any development well, within the ECUS area? It's the first time I've known them to use the word strongly. They in the past for other uses they've said discouraged, but this is the first time they used that uh, typical wording with it. Now the uh, area where where this is is. Um, on the, off of the West End, uh, it has uh, the new study that came out, I guess, in a year or so ago. Um, some of the areas that were previously in a noise area are in a higher noise area now, and some areas that were previously in a noise area are not in one now. So uh, 
and, and that may be a reflection of that, that new letter that they're using, may, it's probably a reflection of the, the changes to that. Any other questions, comments for Mr. Have, Price? I want to. Commissioner Acott. Uh, Mr. Price, you stated that uh, the requirements, the construction requirements are greater yes, in, this, sir. in this area. Yes, sir. Are we, is the county making sure that this is being followed through on and carried out? Yes, sir. Uh, what we do as part of the plan review for a structure, a house, or a commercial building, they submit the plans to our office. We review them according to our noise reduction code. If they have to make any changes, whether it be uh, windows, doors, insulation, we get those done prior to the building inspection to actually issue a permit. And then once it's done, then the inspector makes sure that that structure is built according to the approved plans. So inspections is doing Yes, sir. They, if, if their window, job. If, uh, they, if it calls for a certain amount of insulation uh, in the roof or in the walls based on re reducing noise, then the inspections or the inspector for that particular project makes sure that that structure is built according to those approved plans that, that uh, does, does reduce noise. Commissioner Pate. Uh, Mr. Price, is, is, when they say struggle, it's not because it's a danger, it's just because of the noise. Is that what it, they're yes, talking about? Yes, sir. It's not in the, um, the accident potential zone, which is the area that is uh, 3,000 feet wide and 7,000 feet long. It's not in those areas, but it is an area of, that planes do fly over frequently. Uh, it, it is in a higher noise area as comparison with areas other parts of the county and that is the reason that we have the additional standards there for reducing noise in the structure to reduce uh, injury or uh, harm I guess to the people that might be living in the house trying to sleep or, or trying to rest you have, you can get by with um, more noise in a commercial building or industrial building than you can a house if you're trying to sleep you want it quiet and so what this does is try to reduce those noise in those areas Any other questions, <coughs> Mr. Chairman? Commissioner Daughtery. The zoning requirement in there, was that requiring uh, larger lots? Yes, sir. It does, it does require larger lots than we would normally have. This is actually the minimum lot size in this subdivision is 30,000 square feet, which is twice the uh, minimum lot size that we normally have or that we have in our ordinance of 15,000 for the rest of the county. And so that will also be a second step that would reduce the density of people that will be living in that area. Uh, we, we, know, we hope a plane doesn't come down, um, but if it does, you'd have less people there than you would if you had twice the density. So that's kind of the balance, and that is you increase the uh, size of the lot to decrease the density. Yes, sir. And in, in doing this, we try to find a balance between private property rights and right. making some use of the property, protecting the public by having less density, and those that still choose to build there after doing all of that, making sure their structure is at a, a higher standard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any other comments, questions for Mr. Price? <coughs> I have a, a comment for Mr. Price and to I guess make clarity here is that we have an accident prone area and then we have more so as we move out of that direct path yes Seymour Johnson recognizes um, I guess a potential problem maybe in the future for safety for for less density so so but I think strongly discouraged in what you said about this yes. the first time did that come from mr. Dennis Goodson yes sir and he's been issuing these letters of uh, reports, I guess, from Seymour Johnson for several for, years. I was on it for nine years, and that's yeah, been that's right. He's at least ten years. Right. And so this is the first time you have seen the word strongly. Yes, sir. That is that is a concern of mine, and 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 that's one reason, Mr. Camardi, that that I've asked you to stay on the planning board. Uh, the the previous board, as you know, was some reluctant that, that I continue to stay on the planning board, but I've asked Mr. Camardi to, Commissioner Marty Camardi to stay on that planning board in order to bring us this kind of information. 
Mr. Commissioner Acock's question um, about the, the or the comment about the the echoes or the accident prone area uh, or the windows <coughs> and the noise reduction. But as we get tighter in, then what kind of report would we get from the base if it were in the accident prone area? Will we get a letter st stronger than strongly? I, I, thank um, you for, yes, sir. I think if it discouraged, was, what would that say? It probably say that it's. Um, not recommended if it was in an area that if it was in the accident potential zone um, and somebody was trying we have all of that area zoned industrial and if somebody came in was trying to have it changed to a residential zone so they could develop a subdivision my guess is they probably would say that it uh, I don't know what were they would use other than the strong would discourage but they would uh, because all they do in their studies is they make recommendations. It's up to this board here to make the final decision on any land use. Sure. It's like any other agency that reviews plans. But they um, they have a list of permitted recommended permitted uses in, in all of their areas around Seymour Johnson. As you move closer in, it becomes more restrictive as far as re on residential use. But it moves more toward the commercial side. A lot of commercial uses are allowed and industrial uses. I think they would say a letter that industrial uses are supported for that area, but residential uses would not be. I have a follow. I'll get you to say I have a follow up uh, to that, please, um, if you would allow me. Mm -hmm. The the follow up is as we look at possibly BRAC, um, and they come up with wordage as this, and the density increases by rezoning understanding that the BRAC looks at and scores the county in accordance to I guess it's ordinances that uh, would somehow um, jeopardize the mission of the base so I understand it that the planning board sends every request whether it be a, or ordinance change or zoning change or building within this area you send the base notification that's, that's correct yes sir prior to Right, for if it is a rezoning, we've, we've always, have always done this, but we're also now required by, by state law to send a certified letter to the base commander of any rezoning request. And that bill was just <coughs> and then, Well, that's been in place for Seymour Johnson for a few years. It was, uh, other military installations were added this year. Yes. But it includes anything within five miles of Seymour Johnson, they have to be notified. All right. Mr. Commissioner Mayor. Yes, uh, <clears throat> my question is uh, the, the language has changed. Uh, my problem is, is that I, I think we need to go back to uh, Seymour and, and sit down with the officers that we've been getting the letters from, whoever they are, and get a clarification. You know, why, why has this changed? Why are your concerns seem to be more now than in the past of this area? Well, I, okay. I think I maybe could, could answer that part of that is that the, the current study, the one that we've had for a year or so now, has, has changed the areas that are in the high noise area. Areas that, this is particular area here for Lafayette Park has been in the high noise area for, for years and years. But it is uh, now in a even higher noise area than what it was. Um, we have in the, the areas that we have zoned RA30 uh, throughout the county, or those areas that were in a noise area that were 65 to 70. Airport zone, which has a one acre minimum lot size, was in the 70 to 75. And once we got above 75, we have all of that zone as industrial. So in some of these areas, based on the new study, areas that were previously in the RA30 zone have moved to what would now, they would recommend, or we would change it to be an airport zone. So those are some recommendations that actually will be coming to this board from the planning board on revisions to our zoning map that will address some of these issues that you hear, see here. Lafayette Park is a subdivision that has been going on. Uh, this preliminary was approved five years ago. Uh, and that's sort of the reason that we're moving on with it if it was just starting now, instead of having a 30,000 square foot lot, they'd have a one acre lot in that area. 
in that case, you may have a letter that may, at that point would have said discouraged. <coughs> so again, we're sort of going back to where we were. They started the project five or six years ago. The, we had a down in the economy as far as house construction. The developer chose to pull back on it uh, and now is ready to move on with the project as he originally started five years ago. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Kumar. <coughs> uh, I would just like to add that in serving on the planning board, uh, and we have uh, experienced chairpersons uh, of the planning board who've been on there serving in over time. And believe me, there's a lot of discussion about anything that encroaches upon the base and BRAC. I mean, we've had little issues that uh, anything, if things will come up related to uh, the height of towers and all kinds of things that we feel like could be any kind of a uh, a hindrance or a problem with Seymour Johnson and let me say this there's I feel like there's a lot of uh, adequate communication uh, between Seymour Johnson and the office <clears throat> pardon me we have had presentations on just the subject that uh, Ms. Price is talking about the, the maps the, 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 the zones and what they mean so uh, we get a lot of discussion at the meetings about those kinds of issues so uh, we're in safe hands over there. I, I won't say that because I'm proud of the veterans who are there who've been serving a lot longer than these two or three years that I have, two years, whatever it is. So uh, we're, they're right on top of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Acock? Yes, I think if you can, if you look at the plot, uh, part of it's self-explanatory. The old section that has already been developed, if you look at it, the one with the hash marks in it, and then look at the new section, uh, you can see that the new lots are almost twice or probably twice as large as the old section. Correct, Mr. Yes, Price. Sir. So so there has there has been steps taken to uh, to make it more favorable. And if, if the if you notice on the map there, uh, up near the, the top there's a, a street access as you see going to some property at the rear. It's actually a landlocked parcel. If that were to come in now as a preliminary instead of having 30,000 square foot lots there, they would have one acre lots. Any other questions, comments? Just one more comment. Well, the comprehensive land use plan that we have approved in our budget to um, work with the city and the cities around uh, Goldsboro or in the county, the municipalities, the comprehensive land use plan uh, will bring this issue up um, again to look at uh, what the base in their mission and BRAC and in, in fact if BRAC becomes law which it is not yet but if it does then of course we will address that but until then this subdivision complies with all the ordinances yes, of sir. this county that's correct and, and the government has set this ordinance and which is this board and he is building it in accordance with with what we have set as standards in the ordinance of this county that is correct sir Any other discussion? <coughs> All those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. All those opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Price. Yes, Establish a meeting of the Wayne County Board of. Yes, sir. I know it is. It's uh, 12 after. <laughs> Establish a meeting of the Wayne County Board of Adjustments on August the 20th, 2013. Mr. Smith. Yes, sir. I asked the attorney if he would just to bring this to your attention. We are looking at August 20th at 11 a.m., by the way. We didn't do a time, but we were looking at 11 a.m. I'll turn it over to the attorney. Uh, this, the Board of Commissioners sits as the Board of Adjustment in Wayne County. So you, you, this matter will come before you sitting as the Board of Adjustment. It is an action item. What's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I move that, I move that we establish a meeting of the Wayne County Board of Adjustment on August the 20th at 11 a.m. Motions on the floor that we set the meeting, establish the meeting. All those, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, raise your hand. All those opposed? Thank you. That's unanimous. It's just shy after 10. Uh, we finished our new business. Uh, at 10 o'clock, we have our public comments. I apologize for running 10 minutes over, um, but we're trying to take care of a lot of business so we can get, get on with this, this 
this morning. So at this time, I would like to uh, call the, the session to a pub public comment section. You have four minutes to come before the commissioners. State your name, your uh, address, and phone number. Honorable Commissioners, Mr. Manager, Mr. Attorney, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to come before this board and speak. And I want to thank you for... Uh, What's your name, sir? And your oh, address? I'm sorry. And your Neil Journey, 237 South Hillcrest Drive, Goldsboro, North Carolina, 27534, 919-731-2102. Uh, you know, like I said, it's a pleasure and it's a privilege to be able to come up here and have the freedom to speak before you this morning. And I thank you for the extra minute, although I hope I don't have to get into the fourth minute. But uh, I'm very pleased with the direction that you're taking this county with your initiatives. Uh, first, uh, I forget what you call it, but the initiative to develop our ports and to uh, be able to bring uh, those cargo containers in inland to a prospective uh, inland container port, hopefully here in Wayne County, uh, as the two major railroads converge right here in Wayne County. And that would bring thousands and thousands of good paying jobs. And uh, that would just be wonderful. Uh, I don't know how much luck you'll have with uh, getting the military to uh, create a depot here for the vehicles coming back from overseas. Uh, but that's a good idea too. And I'd also like to thank you for some of the past resolutions you've passed since you've taken office. Uh, thank you for one that concerned the Second Amendment. And I, I don't recall the other one, but it, I, I liked it too. And also, I want to thank you for the resolution that you passed today for the Purple Hearts and uh, also for the contribution to their society. They do a great work. And uh, being a veteran, I really appreciate what they're doing there. Uh, in conclusion, I would just like to say that uh, on this matter that you just voted on about this uh, building these new homes in the, uh, in the ACUS area, or the no high noise area, I know it's legal and it's according to the ordinances and everything. But I would remind you there was just a crash in Luke Air Force Base, and it was one mile from where my daughter lives. And uh, we have to be very careful. Uh, if you lose this base, uh, I don't even need to talk about how much money it's going to cost this county and how, how devastating it would be if you <coughs> lost this base. And that, we all know that's what the BRAC looks at. So again, I said thank you for the time that you give me to come up here and speak. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Journey. Anyone else? Good morning, commissioners, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Victor Miller, 325 Cedar Road, Goldsboro, North Carolina, 275-34-210-862-3372. I'm up here uh, just because uh, I understand you might have gotten a written invitation. The uh, Goldsboro uh, VA Medical Clinic is opening up they're having a ribbon cutting ceremony they are open up for business as of now they are taking patients but they're having a ribbon cutting ceremony on july 29th at 10 a.m and i'd like to personally on behalf of the uh i've already talked to robin demark and i told her i was going to come up and talk to you gentlemen today and i'd like to personally invite every one of you on behalf of the uh, public affairs officer uh the va hospital in uh, fayetteville invite you guys for that ribbon cutting ceremony we're going to have some distinguished guests Unfortunately, I don't have any of those names on me right now. I sent uh, Robin of Texas this morning and asked him if, if she could uh, remind me of who those uh, speakers are going to be. But it's, uh, as I've been through um, Wayne County in the past month, I should say, I've talked to a lot of veterans. I've talked to a lot of citizens of this uh, great county. And surprisingly, not a lot of people are aware that this um, clinic is opening or that there was one being built at overall. Um, a lot of them thought it was being built in uh, uh, Wilmington. Some of them thought it was being built in, uh, I think Smithfield was another one I heard. So th the more I get up here, the more we speak about it, I think just raises more awareness that there's actually going to be a clinic here. And I think it's mainly, it's, it's, it's kind of sad that not a lot of people um, know about it, but we'd appreciate it if you guys would uh, show your presence, represent your, uh, your county, your uh, districts. We look forward to seeing you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Thank you. Mr. King. Chairman. Commissioner Pay. Just one quick comment. Um, each of us, co commissioners, got an e-invitation on your email. 
to uh, attend the ribbon cutting. So if you haven't asked for that, you need to do so. <laughs> Everybody, you have all been signed up. <laughs> so if you didn't think you did, you did. Thank you. Thank Anyone you. else would like to speak? Jerry Grantham, 256 Grantham Farm Lane, Goldsboro, 919-689-2706. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Mr. Grantham. First, I want to thank you gentlemen for the job you've done since you took office. I prayed for you before you were elected and I intend to continue to do that as long as you're in office. I'm here to speak concerning the proposed uh, plans for the new school facility in the Grantham community. Uh, one thing I'm sure we can all agree on is what is best for the children. I have no children or grandchildren who will benefit from any of these proposals that have been made. So what I have to say is really for the benefit of my neighbors. First to look at what we already have. While some of the buildings are older than I am, most are not. And I'm told that the newer ones are more than adequate to serve the needs of children from kindergarten to age four. Also, with the planned removal of the oldest building, there'll be plenty of room for additional needs far into the future. Seems to me like it would be wasteful to abandon good buildings then construct new ones less than a mile away. What about recreational facilities? The present campus is more than adequate for the younger children, of course. The property available for the new school has plenty of room for indoor and outdoor needs. Having the two schools completely separate would eliminate any conflict over the use of those facilities. Building one campus instead of two would also free up money which could be used in other parts of the county. Finally, gentlemen, let's talk about something we'd rather not even think about. Children can be very cruel to each other. After all, they're little centers just like we're big centers. We can eliminate a lot of potential problems simply by keeping them separate. No doubt there are other ideas to consider in this matter, but I hope you gentlemen will keep these things in mind when you make your final decision. God bless you, and I thank you for this opportunity. And I have a copy of this for each one of you. Thank you, Mr. Grant. Mr. Grant, maybe you handed this to the Board of Education. You made the same presentation. No, sir. Are you intending to? Yes. When, when is that? I was thinking about going when you all meet together on the 30th. That will not be a public, that be a work session between both commissions, but the public will not be speaking. Okay. But I would encourage you to make this same presentation before the